Good morning. Welcome to our service of Holy Eucharist, Rite 1, according to the Book of Common Prayer. And welcome to all joining us at St. John's Virtual Church on this Pentecost Sunday. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ saith. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Glory be to God on high, and on earth peace, goodwill towards all. We praise thee, we bless thee, we worship thee, we glorify thee. We give thanks to thee for thy great glory. O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty. O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For thou only art holy, thou only art the Lord. Thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, who did this day teach the hearts of thy faithful people by sending to them the light of thy Holy Spirit, grant us by the same Spirit to have a right judgment in all things, and evermore to rejoice in his holy comfort. Through the merits of Christ Jesus, our Savior, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the same Spirit, one God, world without end. Amen. Please be seated for our readings. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the day of Pentecost had come, the disciples were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus, in Asia, Phrygia, Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and Prosulites, Cretans and Arabs. In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them, men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams, even upon my slaves, both men and women. In those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy, and I will show portent portents in the heaven above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood, before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. 
Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The word of the Lord. Let us read a portion of Psalm 104, alternating by whole verse. O Lord, how manifold are your works. In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. There move the ships, and there is the Leviathan, which you have made for the sport of it. You give it to them, they gather it, you open your hand, and they are filled with good things. And you send forth your spirit, and they are created, and so you renew the face of the earth. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Philip said to Jesus, Lord, show us the Father and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still don't, do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly, I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do and in fact will do greater works than these because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him because he abides with you and he will be in you. I have said these things to you while I am still with you, but the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not let them be afraid. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of God. Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Please be seated. Pentecost. We made it. 50 days of celebration through Easter season. I know that's hard for us Episcopalians, all that celebration. I've had many people say, when are we getting the confession back? It is interesting how much we want to come and say how, like, ugh, but it's hard for us to say, celebrate. So today we celebrate the coming of the Holy Spirit, the gift of the advocate that we hear Jesus talking about in the gospel today. And when they talk about a rushing wind in Acts, Chuck Silva and I experienced that firsthand this morning. We were walking up the hill and talking, and the wind was blowing over Chapel Hill, and as you uh, have over the hill on Chapel, as it always does. And that blue tarp that is wonderfully secured, let loose. And I'm holding on to one side, and he's holding on to another, grabbing cinder blocks, and I'm like, where's Reggie? And I kind of giggled because I thought to myself, oh, it's Pentecost, we'll do this, that, and the other. And then we're just disrupted by this wind. That's the way the Spirit works. Lest we get too comfortable today and saying, oh, the Holy Spirit is here for us. Buckle up. When she shows up, the Holy Spirit, buckle up. 
because it is so disruptive. So much of our time as humans gets spent on security, and I would say false security, the illusion. We kind of say things like, if you watch, um, if you watch TV at all, you'll notice that a lot of the advertisements are about security. And the, it's the way things are talked about, whether it's financial security, if you just have this planner and this thing, you'll be set. Or if you just take this medicine, you'll be fine. And then they rattle off all the side effects at the end as fast as they can. It is an interesting culture where we go tell our doctors what medicine we should take. This idea of security is so prevalent that we look to these earthly things that will provide security. And it is an illusion. And Pentecost is an opportunity for us to really just peel back the veil and say, it's all an illusion, this security. We live in a world that is scary, period. It just is. And yet we have been gifted by Almighty God, the Holy Spirit. Not so that we can sit in our houses and say, oh good, we're safe. No, so that we may be emboldened to go into the world to help God usher in God's kingdom. To be about kingdom business. To be about ushering in love and sharing love and, and shining light into the dark corners. I think about this week at, in this community. It's been a rough week. We've had gun violence kind of, it never subsides. You do realize that, right? In America, it doesn't ever go away. It just spikes every once in a while, and we're kind of like, we wake back up. And in our community this week, we had this random violence that happened to a little boy that went to Little Harbor on vacation. And he was killed while driving a car with his dad because somebody was shooting a gun. Random as it can be, and yet tragic. This week, it's been so hard. And yet, the Holy Spirit emboldens us not to just retreat. Last night, people gathered by the Memorial Bridge to kind of say, hey, let's raise our voice. We're in this together. How do we care for each other? How do we have these conversations? And one of the things that I am aware of is that with the Holy Spirit, and as we hear in the, um, from Joel in the book of Acts today, where Peter talks about it, this Holy Spirit isn't just for Episcopalians that show up at 8 o'clock. It's for everybody. Everybody. And so how do we tend this spirit that is within us? I watched this week as we celebrated the lives of saints who have gone to be with God. I would say some t um, St. John's at its very best is when we celebrate life. And we celebrate the lives of those who have gone to be with God. Funerals. We as a community do that really well. It is when we are paying attention. It is when the Holy Spirit is alive and well in us. And it is that love that we show to each other, that we hold each other. That is the security that I think that the Holy Spirit provides. It is not a security that is an illusion where we can pretend that we're gonna be just fine. It is rather an awareness that we're all in this together. We are all in this together. And that as we hold each other, we can bear each other up. We can bear one another's burdens. We can care for each other. Not perfectly, not without suffering, not without challenge, but we can do it. It is this understanding that as we move through our life together, the Holy Spirit is with us. 
I also had the opportunity to celebrate a wedding yesterday. My wife calls it when I have funerals, weddings, and baptisms in the same weekend. We call that the liturgical trifecta. <laughs> or as I heard once from Harold Lewis, my mentor, he says, that's when we hatch, match, and dispatch. <laughs> but this fullness of life, this range of emotions, of being joyful and yet sad, of being in a place where we are not just praying, but moving our feet. One of the questions that I've been asked this week is like, I know that you say often, Rob, this proverb of when we pray, we need to move our feet. I don't know how to move my feet right now. I feel paralyzed. And that, my friends, is why I go to church. Because you all remind me you all give me ways in which I am reminded on a weekly basis how to move my feet, how to love, how to use the gift of the Holy Spirit. This Thursday, I have been asked to do the um, invocation at Heron Field Academy, which is a middle school. And it's in Salmon Falls, just down near Hampton, or Hampton Falls. And it's just south of here. And it was funny because the person who asked me said, you know what an invocation is, right? <laughs> and I said, yes, but you tell me what you think it is because I'm coming to your house. <laughs> and I thought about these eighth graders that are moving on. And what do you say to them? And I thought about Pentecost and this disruptive wind that just blows where she will, wherever. And I thought back to kind of what I have said to them, because I have, go to their sanctuary service every once in a while. It's their chapel service. I think my friends that are colleagues, I mean, that are teachers there, invited me to do this to haze me. Because can you imagine talking to sixth to eighth graders at 7.55 in the morning as their first thing? Oh my gosh, it's painful for them. So this time, at least it's at 5.30, so I think my opening lines will be something like, hey, you're finally awake. <laughs> but more than that, I thought about saying to them what I wanna say to you and what I wanna remind myself is that God has given us the Holy Spirit because we are made for goodness. We are made to be co-creators with God. We are not to be spectators. We are to be active participants in this spreading of God, God's gospel, of the love, of the light, of standing up for those who cannot stand up for themselves. But the Holy Spirit resides in us. So I invite you this day to look around this room. These are your friends. These are those who will bear you up. And I know that it's not limited to this, this one room, but we talk a lot about community. Community is not just a catchphrase. It is a requirement for life. It is where we experience God. It is where we can hold people up, whether it's at a funeral, whether it's at a baptism, that we will hold these children up and these families, or a wedding where we celebrate love. Or on a Sunday morning at 8 o'clock, when the senior warden and the rector are holding on to the tarp, going, what is going on now? Let us not rest in an illusion of security, but let us welcome the disruption of the Holy Spirit and follow where it leads.
Amen. Let us stand together and reaffirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed, which can be found at the bottom of page 327. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of the Father, and he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe one holy Catholic and apostolic church I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ Church and the world. Almighty and ever-living God, who in thy holy word has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all people, Receive these our prayers which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord. And grant that all those who do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. Give grace, O heavenly Father, to Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, to Robert, our bishop, to Ann, Dick, and Rob, our clergy, and to all bishops and other ministers, that they may, both by their life and doctrine, set forth thy true and lively word, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. We beseech thee also so to rule the hearts of those who bear the authority of government in this and every land, especially Joseph, our president, and Chris, Janet, and Charles, our governors, and all the leaders of the world, that they may be led to wise decisions and right actions for the welfare and peace of the world. And we pray for all those who serve or live in harm's way, especially those in our military, all first responders, and civilians. Open, O Lord, the eyes of all people to behold thy gracious hand in all thy works, that rejoicing in thy whole creation, they may honor thee with their substance and be faithful stewards of thy bounty. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor all those who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity, remembering especially all refugees fleeing war and oppression and all those ravaged by natural disasters. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the Church of the Province of Central Africa. In the diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for the Holy Cross Episcopal Church where, and for the, digital, the digital mission of the Episcopal Church in New Hampshire. 
I invite you to offer any other names for whom we might pray. Aquarius. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed in this life in faith and fear, remembering those killed by acts of violence. And at home we remember Edwin Cook, Vivian Meffin, beseeching thee to grant them continual growth in thy love and service and to grant us grace so to follow the good examples of all thy saints, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant these our prayers, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Would you please stand? God is love, and those who live in love live in God, and God lives in them. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Do you have an announcement? Sure. Yes, it's June. There are things that happen in June. <clears throat> One of them is the fill the hall, fill the music hall for gather. And um, we're going to be having our gather gathering again. Um, it's going to be the weekend of the 19th. And um, you're invited after this service to bring your goods to the Philbrick Room. And we will organize for the folks from gather to collect them. Um, and we'll be giving you a list of the preferred items um, over the course of the week so that we're kind of clear that we're actually giving them what they need. Um, uh, and that will help us, I think. So that will be coming out in the e-news um, and in the bulletin for next week. And then the collection will be Sunday the 19th. Thank you. Thanks, Anne. Today at 2 o'clock, we have our ice cream social. And it is for um, the efforts around Teen Sea Coast for Af Afghan refugee families that are in our midst. And we do have a family that is in our community that this is going to directly support. So if you haven't bought a ticket, don't worry. We'll spell them at the door. Um, so come at 2 o'clock. Also, I want to remind you of the beatitude that Jesus left off. Um, is, um, it is blessed are the flexible. Um, for they are not that out of shape. And I mean, because with the entrance going in here and all of that, so if you need to get into the kitchen either now or, or the hall either now after church or at 2 o'clock, you can come through the church and go out this way, or you can come up from the um, parking lot or go in the lower door. But um, obviously, as you will walk out, um, the tarp that I spoke of does kind of block the way in as our entrance to the hall that way. So I just wanted to let you know. And uh, again, thank you all for being so flexible. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice.
All things come of thee, O Lord. The flowers on the altar are given to the glory of God in celebration of Pentecost. Our celebration continues with the great thanksgiving using Eucharistic Prayer 2, which can be found on page 340 of the Book of Common Prayer. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, according to whose true promise the Holy Ghost came down from heaven, lighting upon the disciples to teach them and to lead them into all truth, uniting peoples of many tongues in the confession of one faith, and giving to thy church the power to serve thee as a royal priesthood and to preach the gospel to all nations. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord most high. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. All glory be to thee, O Lord, our God, for that thou didst create heaven and earth, and didst make us in thine own image. And of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to take our nature upon him and to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption. He made there a full and perfect sacrifice for the whole world, and did institute and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death and sacrifice until his coming again. For in the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks to thee, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. For this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for all, for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it, in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, we thy people do celebrate and make. With these thy holy gifts, which we now offer unto thee, the memorial thy Son hath commanded us to make having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming again with power and great glory. And we most humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to hear us, and with thy word and Holy Spirit, to bless and sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may be unto us the body and blood of thy dearly beloved Son, Jesus Christ. And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness, to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, whereby we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies. Grant, we beseech thee, that all who partake of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and also that we and all thy whole church may be made one body with him, that he may dwell in us, and we in him, through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. O Lamb of God that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God that takest away the sins of the world, grant us thy peace. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God, take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank Thee for that Thou dost feed us in these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of Thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and dost assure us thereby of Thy favor and goodness towards us 
and that we are very members in corporate in the mystical body of thy Son, the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom. And we humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. The peace of God, which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, be amongst you and remain with you and those you love, both this day and always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.